Okay, so we've already um, gone through the first three steps for the temperature interval analysis. And in this video, we'll be covering step four and step five. So once we have our interval set up, we want to find the total energy gained by the cold streams and the total energy lost by the hot streams. So in our first interval, we only have one stream, C1. So the energy gained in that interval is just going to be equal to 7.5 kilowatts. Now for our next interval, we have both H1 and C1. So when you have multiple streams in the same interval, you want to add the nth heat capacities of the cold stream and subtract the heat capacities of the hot streams. Since the cold streams are gaining heat and the hot streams are going to be losing heat. So in this case we have the heat capacity of C1 which is 0.75 kilowatts per degree Celsius minus the heat capacity of H1 which is 1 kilowatt per degree Celsius and our temperature interval is 100 and we're left with negative 25 kilowatts and you want to do this for the remaining intervals and these are the numbers that I got minus 30 kilowatts for interval 3 2.5 kilowatts for interval 4 50 kilowatts for interval 5 25 kilowatts for interval 6 and finally negative 5 kilowatts for interval 7 so we're done with step 4 let me check that off okay so we're nearing our finale the residual heat for the network so what do I mean by that okay uh, we have seven intervals for our temperatures in this setup so we have one I'm just gonna set up a cascade diagram here one two three and so on four five six seven Okay, I'm just gonna push this one down a little, All right? So the energy that the energy gained in the first interval, the energy that you add in the first interval is gonna be equal to your hot utility, and the energy removed from the last interval is gonna be equal to the cooling utility. And what you're essentially doing is you're cascading from the first interval to the last interval, which means you want to get a cumulative sum of all of these enthalpies. So for our first pass, we assume that QH is equal to zero. We're not adding any hot utility. So for our first pass, the energy coming down from the first interval is going to be equal to what we've calculated here 7.5 kilowatts and the energy coming down from the second interval is going to be equal to 7.5 kilowatts minus 25 so the cumulative enthalpy change similarly for the third interval it's going to be 17.5 minus 30 and you want to keep doing that for all of the intervals. So for the next intervals you get negative 45, negative uh, 5 kilowatts. And for the second last interval I have 30 kilowatts. And the last interval gives you 25 kilowatts. Okay. So for the first pass, we assume that we do not have any heating utility. Now you see you have like negative enthalpy, you have negative uh, values of 
heat transfer and as you go down from the first interval to the last interval you're going from a higher temperature to a lower uh, lower temperature negative values of heat transfer would imply that heat is transferring from lower temperature to higher temperature and that's not possible we know that so what you want to look for is you want to look for the most negative now the next step is to look for the most negative value of enthalpy change and in our case that's negative 47.5 so in our second pass what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the same um, we're gonna add that amount of energy to our interval to our first interval and that's gonna mean that all of our subsequent intervals are gonna become positive and the enthalpy, the energy transfer from in interval 3 to interval, interval 4 is going to become 0. And if you remember, after we adjusted the steam temperatures, our pinch point was 0. Which means that heat transfer across the pinch has to be equal to 0. We have found, hence we found our pinch point. Yay. Now you can find the values. All of these values are just going to be these values. So it's just going to be 7.5 plus 47.5, uh, negative 17.5 plus 47.5. I'm not going to calculate all of those because they're not going to really help me. The only three values that are going to help me are, let me highlight those, QH because that's the uh, minimum heating utility requirement. I already have my pinch point and the last value. 25 plus 47.5 that's going to give me the cooling utility requirement so that comes out to be seventy two point five kilowatts okay so I have my I know the location of my pinch point the pinch point occurs in the uh, between the third and the fourth interval which is third interval and the fourth interval so our pinch temperature has to occur at 150 degrees Celsius because that's the temperature that lies between both of these intervals our pinch point occurs at a cold stream temperature of 150 degrees Celsius and we have our heart utility requirement and the minimum cooling utility requirements keep in mind these are the minimum energy requirements and depending on the network your requirements might change okay so now if you want to set up your heat exchange network our pinch point for the cold stream was found to be 150 degrees celsius so for the hot streams it's going to be the minimum temperature above that so we have h1 h2 and the other streams c1 c2 h1 or originates at 300 degrees celsius and needs to be cooled down to 50 degrees so uh, h1 needs to be cooled down to let me see 150 degrees celsius h2 is available at a tar uh, source temperature of 200 degrees Celsius and needs to be cooled down to 50 degrees Celsius our cold stream uh, C1 is available at 100 degrees Celsius C2 is available at 50 degrees Celsius and we have our respective target temperatures Three hundred and one fifty. And we know the location of our pinch point. So the pinch, uh, the minimum approach temperature for hot streams is going to be one sixty, and for the cold streams, it's going to be one fifty degrees Celsius. So now you can see that some of these streams don't 
exist above the pinch point for example c2 does not exist above the pinch point so we're just going to get rid of that similarly um let's see h1 needs to be cooled down to 150 degrees celsius and like it terminates at the pinch point so now once we have the location of our pinch point we can start matching streams which we're gonna go over in the next video so just a brief recap of what we did here we selected our minimum approach temperature we adjusted our stream temperatures in our case there are more than one ways of adjusting stream temperatures we went uh, by like we decided to go by decreasing the hot stream temperatures by a value equal to the minimum approach temperature we set up our intervals now the temperature intervals were set up based on the values of temperatures found in the adjusted stream temperatures and next we found the energy gained by the cold streams plus the energy lost by the hot streams in each interval and lastly we just cascade it cascaded to find the residual heat which led us to the uh, location of the pinch point the minimum utility requirement the minimum heating utility requirement and the minimum cooling utility requirement all right so thanks for watching